Hey, what's going on? This is Mr. Bainey, and today's lesson is 4.2, Determining Slope and Y-Intercept. The standard is 8.EE.6. The essential question is, how can you determine the slope and the Y-intercept of a line? Uh, so now we're actually going to be looking at specifically, um, not from an equation really, but um, looking at either a table or a graph and then finding the slope and the Y-intercept. Um, and then maybe how um, how that works on a graph because we're going to be using that information a lot uh, from now on. So um, it actually gives you the, in the Explore, definition of what a y-intercept is. We've talked about slope so much already that you just go back to previous lessons and look at what slope is. Uh, but I'll just quickly refresh your mind here that slope is... Uh, slope can be described as rise over run, or it can be described as uh, change in y over the change in x. Okay, that's slope. The y-intercept is um, the y-coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the y-axis. So this is the important part, where it the graph intersects the y-axis. Um, the, the x coordinate is always zero. Okay, so that's, this means x equals zero, and we don't know what y is. Y is something. So take a look at this graph that's right, right here. Um, you see this blue line, and then the y intercept, sorry, y axis. The y intercept is where it touches. So the blue line touches the y axis right there. That's our y intercept. Okay, most lines. Well, all lines, with the exception of one, are always going to touch the y-axis somewhere, and that's the that's the uh, y-intercept. So um, we're actually going to uh, find the slope of this line on the graph uh, using those points they gave us. They gave us the points negative uh, three comma six and zero comma four. There's a couple ways to do this, but um, I'm going to use the slope form that they have here. So if we're using um, here, I'm going to do a table really quick, actually, and see if this helps you understand this a little bit better. So um, 0, 4 means that's 0 and that's 4. And then the next point, negative 3, 6 is x is negative 3 and y is 6. So um, the top of the fraction, remember I said that slope is change in y over the change in x? Well, the change in y is this right here that I've circled in green. And that is, how much does it change from four to six? So for us to do that, we do six minus four, which is two, okay? Then we wanna do, what is the change going from zero to negative three, what I've circled in yellow there? Well, to find the change, I subtract. It's going to be uh, negative three minus zero, which is negative three. And so the slope is negative two-thirds. Um, the line also contains the point 6, 0. I'm going to mark that on the graph here. 6, 0 is on the x-axis. What is the slope using 0, 4 and zero, 6, 0? Using negative 3, 6 and 6, 0, what do you notice? Um, so I'm actually going to show uh, finding the slope a little bit differently and take a look at the graph. So from 0, 4, uh, remember that slope is also rise over run. And so I can get slope by doing this. I can do my rise would be negative 4. And my run would be going over positive 6. So slope is rise negative 4 over run 6. And that actually reduces to negative two thirds. You just multiply top and the bottom by two. And so you'll notice that you get the same thing. Okay. If I wanted to do um, from the first point, uh, let's do a different color here. If I want to do from um, the negative three comma six, I'm doing this in pink, all the way to six comma zero then I'm actually going down six, that's negative six, 
and over a total of 9. So negative 6 over 9 would still be negative 2 thirds. Okay, so same exact slope. Um, compare answers in step 1 and 2 with the equation of the graph line. The equation of the graph line, I'm going to rewrite it here, equation. I'm going to scroll up so you can see it. The equation is right here. Y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. So we all, in step number 1 and step number 2, we got negative 2 thirds. Well, negative 2 thirds is, bam, right there, negative 2 thirds. Okay, so the slope shows up in the equation. That's going to be important. For us as we continue to work forward. Uh, we're going to find the value of y when x equals 0 with the equation. Um, so if x is 0, then that means I'm going to change that to 0. So let me, um, I'm just going to rewrite it again. So negative, it's y equals negative 2 thirds times x plus 4. And instead, it's going to be y equals, uh, sorry, I'm going to try to squeeze it in here, y equals negative 2 thirds times 0 plus 4. I wanted to write just right below just to show that everything is the same except I just changed x to 0. So uh, negative 2 thirds times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay. So if my answer is 4, um, remember that x, if x is 0, y is 4, so that's the point 0, 4. And how does that compare? How does the 4 compare with my equation? With this, I'm going to rewrite it again. Well, the 4 that we got is right here. Okay. So let's move on. You can kind of think about how that relates to uh, what we've been doing in the past, um, you know, lesson in a module. On the next page, uh, on the very top, there's a definition of slope intercept form. And this right here is something that's going to be talked about a lot. It's going to be referenced a lot. Slope intercept form. It is this equation right here. Y equals mx plus b. Remember that. Y equals mx plus b. M is the slope and, and uh, b is the y-intercept. Okay, and then also it says that the rate of change right here is your slope. And that the initial value, when it says that, is your y-intercept. Sometimes, sometimes when it's a word problem, they'll say rate of change. And they'll say initial value, but they, they're really talking about slope and y-intercept. It's the same thing. Okay, so on the bottom, for the your turn, let's find the slope and the y-intercept of the line represented by each table. So the slope is rate of change. Okay, if you remember, uh, I'm not going to write it again. It was on the previous uh, page. That slope is rise over run but it's also change in y over change in x. So uh, I will write that last part I just said right here, change in y over change in x. And so I wanna look at, all right, how does my y change? Cause that's gonna go on top, right? That changes by 10. Sorry, it's hard to see that green there. The x changes by 2. Okay, so again, the y changed by 10. The x changed by 2. So we do 10 divided by 2, which is 5. If you want to just double check and make sure, you can check the rest of the table. So the next thing, uh, from 32 to 42, that's a change of 10. And then above that's a change of 2 again. And then on the bottom, 42 to 52 is a change of 10. And then 6 to 8 is a change of 2. So it's the same rate of change throughout the whole thing. So we actually call that a constant rate of change. And that's what makes a line. Now, uh, the tricky part, y-intercept. 
the y-intercept is when x, so this is when x equals 0. Uh, so you want to look at the table. Do we have um, any point where x is 0? Like this point right here, x is not 0. This point, x is not 0. It's 4. This one, we don't have x is 0. And here, we don't have x is 0. So how do I get 0? 0 is actually comes right before this. Notice that I go by 2s. So it goes 2, 4, 6, 8. If I go back one more, I actually get back to 0, right? I want x equals 0. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to go backwards. So instead of going to the right and adding 2, I'm actually subtracting 2. And then on the bottom, instead of adding 10, I'm going to the right and adding 10. I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to subtract 10. So right here, I want to subtract 10. And 22 minus 10 is going to give me 12. OK, so that's going to give me my y-intercept. So y-intercept, I could write 0, 12. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Uh, or, or I could just write 12. Okay, uh, if that makes sense to you, I want you to try number two before you actually see my answer. You can go and pause the video before you see the solution. I'm going to do it right away. Okay, rate of change is a change in y divided by change in x. So change in y, 8 to 15, that's plus 7. Change in x is a plus 1. So uh, m, which is my slope or rate of change, is 7 over 1, which is 7. That's rate of change. And again, you can go 15 to 22 is adding 7. That's adding 1 right above. 22 to 29 is plus 7. And then above that, it's a plus 1. Okay, same rate of change throughout. Now the y-intercept, because this goes by 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I go back just one step, if I go backwards, I get to x equals 0. So I'm going to go back. I'm subtracting 1 this time to get x is 0. Uh, on the bottom, since I'm adding 7, I'm going to subtract 7. And I get x equals 1. So my y-intercept, we use the letter b, is 1. Or we could write 0, comma 1. And so I'm actually going to circle this right here. OK, and next page. Uh, this uh, part here is actually a, a bit complicated because it requires you to work with some variables here. So I'm actually not going to do this. Um, and that means that we're done with the lesson. So uh, this is all about just finding slope and y-intercept uh, from a table. And I hope this helped you. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Please come in and see me. Have a great day.